Alan Kay is one of those people that everybody loves to hate. Oh, there's nothing unpleasant about the chap. In fact, he seems to be thoroughly pleasant. It's just that he's good-looking, talented. Uh, he was a professional jazz musician, an American football star, PhD in computing, uh, invented one of the most important concepts in computing, object-oriented programming, and now runs a program to try and get every child in the world a computer. But apart from that, he hasn't done much with his life. Alan Kay was looking at a program in a computer language he'd never seen before called Simula. Well, Grace Hopper had defined how the logic should work, the verbs. But Alan Kay decided to look at the data, the objects. He realised that the programmer needed to be able to define the data logically too. So he reasoned that you should be able to define your own data types rather than just rely on the simple ones that were available then in any language. Up to this time, the variables, the places in memory, could hold numeric, text or date information, and a few others. Each variable type used the memory in a different way. And so he argued, if you set up your own data type, for example, student, you could then have variables of type student. And he called these variables objects, because that's what they were in his language. And different types of objects could operate in different ways. Just as you can have addition defined for numeric data types, maybe you could have enrollment defined for the student data type. Or maybe you could have qualified as a student data type. In that way, you could make your variables do what you wanted them to do, and then just string these variables together to create your program. And that logic is called object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming stands the conventional idea of programming on its head. Instead of worrying about exactly what your program will do, you worry about the data and what it does. In effect, you invent your own variables, and you decide what those variables can and can't do. The program then becomes an exercise in stringing these new variable types together in the way that you want your program to work. The basic building block of a program is a class. A class is a variable type, like text or integers or whatever, but you define your own. Having defined your class, you then need to create a variable of that class. So, for example, student is just an idea. You can create a variable type called student. But until an Andy Wicks object is actually created, it's still just an idea. So you create objects from classes. In other words, you create a space in the computer's memory for that block of code that you've just created.